Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. You probably eat out a lot. Well, not you. I'm talking about our audience, really. And most Americans do. And people are there looking for fast, easy, and good-tasting foods that they can squeeze into a busy lifestyle. Sometimes you forget to think, what are we having to eat tonight? All right. And, <laughs> you know, you're like a lot of people. And two know. career couples, it's tough to go mm -hmm. home and fix a meal for your spouse and your kids. Now, whether it's carry-out, food court, or a sit-down restaurant, there are smart, healthy choices everywhere if you know what to look for. I guess that's the big if, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, March is National Nutrition Month. It's sponsored by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics to help consumers uh, figure out better choices about what they should eat. And here to offer some tips for healthy eating on the go is Mayo Clinic dietitian Kate Zaratsky. We're always happy to have you on the program, Kate. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Kate, always good to have you with us. So is it true that much of what we eat out isn't very healthy? Probably first and foremost, we eat out a lot. Probably more than 60% of our food dollar is spent away from home. And so we're eating out more than we're eating at home. And I think when we eat at home, we have a whole lot more control over not only how the food is prepared, but how much ends up on our plate, which is a, an indicator of how much we'll consume in the end. So 60% of food dollars are spent outside the home. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. Well, first of all, the way that it's different is that at my kitchen, you cannot order an appetizer. Yeah. I, I, I often, At least not a very good one. I, I mean, often think, though, that when it comes to uh, my teenagers, maybe if you have little kids, if I did offer appetizers that were like healthy stuff, like I'm going to put on some vegetables and dip while everything else is getting done, because I always say, come and sit at the table while we're finishing getting ready to eat, because then we that's when we talk. And that's one of the good things about eating at home. And so I always think, maybe I should put out some of the healthy food right now. <laughs> because then what usually happens is I set the bowl of rice. I'm telling you, white rice. If I could get my kids to eat something that wasn't white rice, it's like their favorite thing. And they will eat tons of white rice, Kate. That's not good. Well, every and, and it goes back to that everything in moderation, but I think you made a really good point, Tracy, is that the idea that what we're offered first when we're hungry, when we get home from work at night, when kids get home from school, we're hungry. And so having that forethought of what can I have available really can set you up for success. And so if vegetables and fruits are readily available. And nothing else. <laughs> yes, that people will choose those. And and it can and even people who if, if they're hungry and preparing a meal, I would say if you walk in the door and, and the cookie jars on the counter or the bag of chips, that's what you're gonna dive into while you're cooking your dinner. So you're going to consume probably three to five hundred calories before you've even sat down for dinner. Whereas if you open the bag of baby carrots, it's all right if you get make it through halfway through the bag or the whole bag. The best invention ever, baby carrots. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, but that's the, the, the secret is that's all you put out there. Because have you ever been, you've been to a, a thousand um, parties and they got hors d'oeuvres out there and everybody goes and buys the celery and the carrots and nobody touches them. That's, <laughs> they all go to whatever else is there and they end up throwing them away. We're going to talk about food waste later, but there's a lot of carrots and celery at the compost pile. <laughs> <laughs> at least at your parties, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Well, um, let's talk a little bit more about eating out or I guess maybe picking up carry out to bring home. Is it's not is it a relatively new thing or is it just that there's more choices for people to do that now? Well, and I think that because Americans are so busy that uh, restaurants and uh, food establishments are catering to what we need and so they make it very easy for us to pick up food for that evening rush. And so it, it doesn't have to be all bad. It might be that you pick up an already cooked chicken. It might be that you stop and get some food that's already prepared. But if you're taking that home, then you can balance out the meal by adding some frozen vegetables or cutting up some fruit or other things like that as you know very healthy accompaniments. And not only accompaniments, but you can make that a larger portion of the meal. And then again, looking at your food dollar, if you're able to stretch that food you brought in and then you have leftovers the next day that can be a really great thing you like chicken chicken's okay chicken's dark okay. meat even even dark meat chicken okay <laughs> and dark meats actually it, 
with chicken, I'd say just take the skin off. And with dark meat, especially for maybe small children or women who are looking to consume more iron, actually, I, I would recommend they eat the dark meat. There you go. Okay. <laughs> That's what Something, you like to hear. Yeah, and then salmon, good. Salmon's good, isn't it? Salmon's very good. Oh, as all fish are. Now, you know, the um, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics offered about 30 tips for eating on the run. Can you share some of those with us? Sure. And, and some of them go right along with what we've been what we've been talking about because we're, we're all busy and eating on the run. But And I think, you know, first and foremost, if you can take some time out of your week when things aren't so busy to just stop and think about what's going on this week and can I plan for it? And then you can think about when I'm making my grocery list, what do I need to get that is simple and easy to pack that maybe doesn't require refrigeration or that I can put in a small cooler? So you can have components of a meal. So you have some protein, so you have some starch, so you have some vegetables and fruits those things that would make up a healthy meal, you can have them right there in the car. So if you're you're getting home and having to be somewhere else in 15 minutes, that cooler is ready mm-hmm. to go. Or it maybe the food is in, in a section of the refrigerator that you just grab it and throw it in a bag and you go. Yet another reason that's a bonus to live in this part of the country. Stuff stays cold in your car. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want it frozen, but Who it does needs stay a freezer? cold. Listen, this list is available at eatright.org. And one of these 30 uh, tips... I especially love, and it's number 11 because it's about splitting your order. And there are more and more restaurants that are offering, whether it's noontime or evening, half of an entree or half of a sandwich or half of a salad. Do you see that happening more and more at restaurants or am I just imagining it? Well, (laughs) whether it's happening or not, I think it's a really nice option when they do because Mm -hmm. Over the past maybe 10 to 20 years, restaurant portions have become very large. And to our our preference and to our perception of, oh, that's a good deal when I get a lot of food for the price I'm paying, we tend to eat more. So I, if we can pair it back to a half of an entree and be uh, satisfied with that because it also matches the price. I think there's a lot to be gleaned from that in terms of health in our pocketbooks. It seems to me like there are a few things uh, that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics doesn't really like or doesn't think that are very healthy. A bread, chips, and french fries. Particularly <laughs> tough on french fries here in this <laughs> and these uh, tips. Well, and I think, Dr. Shives, I think that's a great thing to bring up because we often French fries are a very common side. Now, if you have the option to say, can I get a side of fresh fruit or do you have a side salad that I could swap out for those French fries? That would be a great option. Um, If you cannot or say you really like your fries, the idea, again, of sharing them. The communal fries. Yes. That's what we have. The communal fries. I know. (laughs) Because if you order them, somebody's always grabbing one. Anyway, I share them whether I want to or not. I wanted to ask you about uh, healthier choices. Would you say that at most restaurants, uh, when they have what they call healthy choices or healthy foods, that they truly are healthy? Well, healthy is is not a, uh, I guess, a regulated term. And so healthy can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And so I think when you're at a restaurant, if you are seeing a healthy selection, see if they have a a calorie level or if they have other nutritional information that you can compare it to to see if it really meets your definition of healthy. It should be, you know, relatively uh, low to moderate in calories and have a lower lower amount of saturated fat um, and a relatively lower amount of sodium, which is a tough, again, tough to do in a restaurant setting. Um, But in terms of, again, healthy, you might want to ask, how is it being prepared? And so you might make a special request of how much oil things are sauteed in or if butter is added before it comes to the table or if it is salted before it comes to you. One of the things that I also note from this list, again, it's available at eatright.org. It's 30 tips for eating on the go, eating on the run. Um, One of them was that you should just, when you're out to eat, eat the lower calorie food first which I thought is really interesting because it makes so much common sense, but it's actually something I'd never thought of before. Right. And when you think of the lower calorie foods, they're generally fruits and vegetables. And as Mother Nature made them, those are 80 to 90 percent water. And so they're they're heavy and they're filling because they also have fiber. And so if you're filling up 
on, on your salad or other vegetables or fruits uh, prior to the other foods, you're probably going to control your overall calorie intake as well. Doesn't look to me like the uh, dietitians of the world are very keen on all you can eat buffets. <laughs> uh, all you can eat buffets are challenging and and for many different reasons. But it, again, as Americans, we, we like choice. And when we have a lot of choice, it's a bit overwhelming and we tend to eat more in those types of situations. And so we dish up more, we make more trips. So if you find yourself at, in that type of situation, Maybe survey the buffet ahead of time, find your fruits, find your vegetables, take a plate, <laughs> fill it mostly with those fruits and vegetables and, and, and get a good source of protein or fish. And then, and then the last part of your plate, you can put a little bit of, if it would be your white mm -hmm. rice or, or, or another starch. And then if you, again, if a little bit of dessert, if you can squeeze it on there or share the dessert at the end with a friend. Yep, and save room for that ice cream because you can get all you want right <laughs> oh, out of that geez. big machine. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> trouble. Been, you know, we've been talking about uh, finding ways to better finding ways to make better nutrition choices when you're eating out. It is National Nutrition Month. We are with Mayo Clinic dietitian Kate Zaratsky. Time for a short break. Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. March is National Nutrition Month, and we're back talking with Mayo Clinic dietitian Kate Zaratsky. Kate, another hot topic, and Dr. Shives was a little skeptical that it is a hot topic, uh, but it's about reducing food waste. So we'll start off with that myth or matter of fact. Americans throw away 90 billion pounds of food each year. Is that a myth or a fact? That is a fact. Can no. you believe That's it, Dr. Shines? with a B. <laughs> so uh, explain to us, it's pretty self-explanatory, but what do you mean by food waste? So food waste, uh, it can be categorized in, in, in a few different ways. And so that number, actually that 90 billion that we're talking about may not even be capturing maybe all of the food wow. waste in the world. So when we think about food waste, there's the food that when you think about your own household, and, and maybe it's the leftovers that didn't get eaten or those fruits and vegetables that were in the crisper and were forgotten about. Or think about things that are in your freezer and they get pushed to the back and you pull them out and you're not quite sure what it is. <laughs> those are all examples of household food waste. And then you think beyond our own household, uh, there, uh, there are crops that never make it out of the farmer's fields. There are, uh, there's restaurant waste. There is grocery store waste. and Because so the stuff's not pretty enough for us to buy. Uh, so the, <laughs> exactly. We like our fruits and vegetables and our foods to look a certain way, and we like them to look very shiny and perfect. And they are certainly, in many cases, still edible if they're not shiny and perfect. You know, I don't think people are as conscientious or as money conscious as as my mother used to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think we threw away anything. And, and we uh, lots of nights, we had leftovers. We don't have leftovers like we, we used to. It's easier yep. to throw it away and buy something. And, and part of it because we eat out so much. And then the stuff at home that we didn't eat spoils. And that, that could be part of it, too, is, is that I think when we, we think about our overall uh, pattern of food intake, uh, we all could do a better job at making better use of the food that we buy. Oftentimes when I'm working with people and we start talking about food waste, because I often hear eating healthy is expensive. Mm -hmm. And so food waste is one of these places where we can flip the conversation and say, but what if I could save you $1,500 a year? Because that's what the average family of four is throwing away. And, mm, I, really? and I would say none of us would readily walk up to a garbage can and throw a 20 or 30, $30 in that mm -hmm. each week. But essentially, when you break it down, that's what's happening. And so if we would never throw cash in the waste basket why are we throwing the food that we've purchased in the waste basket i've always thought it's kind of ironic well it is ironic that my mom like your mom uh was working on the farm trying to feed a whole lot of people and did not have access to a superstore like a sam's club or a costco though here's me in town and i am five minutes away from five or six grocery stores mm -hmm. and I got to go over to Costco to get these, you know, huge, massive sizes of things. It is such a shift in thinking that needs to take place. 
Right. And I think it, when you're at the grocery store and say you are offered a sample of something because on sample day, the sales of that particular product go up 30 to 40 percent. Um, uh, my mother-in-law always says oh, that. Say on, that again. On, I'm sorry. On sample day? On sample day. So if you go to the grocery store and they offer oh. you a sample. <laughs> my favorite day to go grocery <laughs> shopping. <laughs> the sales of that product increase about 30 to 40 percent. Is that right? <laughs> and my mother-in-law always says it always tastes better in the store. <laughs> So she buys it and gets it home and finds, okay, now but now what am I going to do with this? And I think we all can relate to that because we tried it in the store and in that moment we were persuaded to put that in our cart and now we have this item and maybe we bought it in bulk. Yep. And so we have a lot of it. And so it's the idea of when we're going to put something into our cart to think about how the next step is how will I use it? Mm -hmm. And I think it's, again, it's that thought process. How and when will I use this? Again, thinking ahead to your week and how busy am I? When do I have time to cook? When and how? One of the tips that you have for avoiding food waste uh, that we've got listed here is to get creative with leftovers. What do you mean by that? So I think we... my way of doing that is putting cheese sauce on everything. So that's probably not what you mean. <laughs> well, and, and I think it's all of us watch more and more cooking shows and, and maybe are eating at restaurants and we are seeing beautiful pictures of food and how it's plated. In our mind, I think we think that food has to look and, and seem a certain way. And when you have a mismatch of things in your refrigerator, you think, well, that's not a meal. When actually, if you have some fruits and vegetables, some protein, some starch, you have a meal. And so it need not necessarily uh, look picture p perfect again, but if you can put it together in the proportions of a balanced meal, you've got a meal. And so at our house, we'll often have the challenge of at a certain, toward the end of the week, when we have to go to the grocery store, yet I haven't gone, we have a clean out the fridge night. <laughs> and so we, we use the foods and it, it might be a complete, you know, a mismatch of things. And it's, it's a smorgasbord of Ooh, sorts. And the first one to the table gets to pick. So that's the night that everybody shows up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and isn't there, there must be a website where you can go and say, here's what I've got in the fridge. What do I do with it? And they tell you how to make a meal. Isn't there a site like that? I am, there's so many good websites. And wow. in fact, there's, there's websites now that actually will say, help you keep inventory with your food if you're if you're indeed looking to be more serious about uh, your food waste. And so you can say, I bought this food on this day, and it helps kind of track or remind you, you need to eat that. We have 30 seconds left uh, in 30 seconds. Would you please tell us the difference between used by, best by, and best before? Oftentimes when you see those dates on food, they are not for you and I. They are for the grocer or the manufacturer, and they are looking at quality or rotation within their stock. So oftentimes, those foods are just fine for us to eat in, from a safety perspective. All right. I, I got a tip. I know it's National Nutrition Month. I'm not a registered dietitian, but here it is. Works for us. Don't go to the grocery store hungry. Oh, boy. That's a good one. <laughs> All right, how to eat right when you're eating out and food waste with Kate Zaratsky. M March is... National Nutrition Month. Thanks for being with us, Kate. Thank you for having me.